Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on scale drawings and scale models. Here's what you'll learn. How to understand ratios and proportions in scale drawings, and how to understand ratios and proportions with scale. I bet you've either made models or played with models at some point in your life. A model is a copy of a three-dimensional figure. Models can be reduced versions of larger objects like airplanes or cars, or they can be enlarged versions of smaller objects that we may have to view under a microscope, like DNA or atoms. The dimensions of an object are enlarged or reduced by multiplying each dimension by a ratio or fraction called a scale factor. Now what's the difference between scale and scale factor? Many people are confused about the difference between the words scale and scale factor. And that's understandable because the difference between them is very subtle. Both scale and scale factor are fractions that help you find dimensions between original and model figures. However, scale can refer to multiplication factors with the same or different units attached to the numbers in the numerator and denominator. By comparison, a scale factor is always a ratio. That means numbers without units. Scale or scale factor is a ratio between two sets of measurements. You can set up every scale or scale factor properly if you remember this ratio, model over actual. That means measurements dealing with the model always go in the numerator. Measurements dealing with the actual figure always go in the denominator. Now take a look at this table and let's identify the scale factor. The table gives us three dimensions, length, width, and height for a real house and for a model of that same house. We find a scale factor by putting a model measurement over the same measurement on the actual object, model over actual. Since all dimensions of our model and actual object will be proportional, we could use any one of these three dimensions to find the scale factor. But for this example, let's use all three sets of dimensions to prove you get the same scale factor no matter which set you use. Let's start by using the length measurements first. Put the model measurement, the 5 feet, over the actual length of 60 feet. Since we have the same units in the numerator and denominator, they're going to cancel, leaving us with 5 over 60. But 5 over 60 can be reduced. We can divide both numbers by their common factor of 5. So let's divide the numerator and denominator by 5. 5 divided by 5 gives us 1 in the numerator, and 60 divided by 5 gives us 12 in the denominator. So our scale factor is 1 twelfth. Now let's use the width measurements and see if we get the same answer. Put the model measurement, the 3 feet, over the actual width of 36 feet. Again we have the same units in the numerator and denominator so they're going to cancel leaving us with the numbers 3 over 36. But 3 over 36 can also be reduced by dividing both numbers by 3. So let's divide the numerator and denominator by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives us 1 in the numerator. And 36 divided by 3 gives us 12 in the denominator. So our scale factor is the same, 1 twelfth, as we expected. Finally, let's use the height measurements and see if we get the same answer. Again, put the model measurement, one and a half feet, over the actual height of 18 feet. Again, we have the same units, numerator and denominator, so they're going to cancel, leaving us with the numbers 1.5 over 18. Now, I'm not a fan of leaving decimals in my fractions, so let's get rid of one and a half by dividing top and bottom by one and a half. When we do that, one and a half divided by one and a half becomes one in the numerator, 
and 18 divided by 1 and a half is 12. So again, our scale factor is the same, 1 twelfth as we expected. A photo of Leonardo da Vinci's painting Mona Lisa has dimensions of roughly 5.9 centimeters in width and 8.6 centimeters in height. If the camera's scale factor is 1 ninth, what are the approximate dimensions of the painting to the nearest whole centimeter? Now we have to perform two separate calculations here, one to find the painting's width and one to find the painting's height. The painting is the original or actual object and the photo of the painting is the model. Now remember our scale factors are set up as model over actual. So I'll write that down so we don't forget it. And the scale factor in this problem is 1 over 9. So that's going to be one of our ratios. Now we can set up proportions using the dimensions given and this scale factor. First, let's figure out the width of the actual painting. The photo or model width is 5.9. So that's going to go in the numerator of our second ratio. So we'll have 5.9 in the numerator. And we're looking for the actual width. So let's go ahead and call that W in the denominator. Now we can solve for W by cross multiplying. 1 times W is W and 9 times 5.9 is 53.1. Now since we're supposed to round to the nearest whole centimeter, we'll say the width of the painting is 53 centimeters. Now we use the same method to determine the painting's height. Again, start with our scale factor of 1 over 9. That's going to be one of our ratios in the proportion. The photo or model height is 8.6 and that goes in the numerator of our second ratio. We're looking for the actual height. Let's go ahead and call that H for height. Now we can solve for H again by cross multiplying. 1 times h is h and 9 times 8.6 is 77.4. Since we're supposed to round to the nearest whole centimeter, the height of the painting is 77 centimeters. On a map, the distance between Portland, Oregon and Eugene, Oregon is 5 centimeters. The map scale is 3 centimeters equals 65 miles. What's the actual distance between these two cities? Well, we need to set up a proportion to solve this problem. Remember, we always set up our ratios as model over actual. So let's write that off to the side so we remember it. One of our ratios is going to be the map scale, which says it's 3 centimeters to 65 miles. Now the only other number we have in this problem is 5 centimeters. What do we do with it? Is that an actual or model distance between the cities? It's a distance on our map. So it's the distance on a model. That means 5 centimeters goes in the numerator of our second ratio. Another way we know that the 5 centimeter number has to go in the numerator is because our scale has units. Our first ratio has centimeters on top, so the second ratio must also have centimeters on top. Next, we don't know the actual distance between the cities, so let's use D for the actual distance in the denominator of our second ratio. Now we can cross multiply to solve for the actual distance D. 3 times D is 3D and 65 times 5 is 325. We need to isolate D on the left by dividing both sides by 3. So let's divide the left by 3 and the right by 3. On the left, 3 divided by 3 cancels, leaving us with just the D isolated on the left side. And on the right, 325 divided by 3 is 108.3 and the 3 keeps on repeating. So that means the distance between Portland and Eugene is about 108 miles. 
Congratulations! You've learned how to understand ratios and proportions in scale drawings and how to understand ratios and proportions with scale.